Hello, it is our pleasure to welcome you to the EVIT 2024 National Technical Honor Society induction ceremony. Please stand as we recognize our candidates. Welcome, class of 2024 NTHS inductees. We are excited to induct 70 students into NTHS this year. Thank you all for joining us tonight to celebrate the accomplishments of these young men and women. We are also proud to welcome administrators and the EVIT board that have joined us in attendance tonight. To begin our ceremony, I would like to invite Fatima Laura Duentes, NTHS ambassador and second year medical assisting to come forward and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand. I pledge your allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, with liberty, liberty and justice for all. Our first speaker is Dr. Chad Wilson, Superintendent of EVIT. 
He is married and has two children and is originally from Tucson, Arizona. He has been an educator for almost 30 years as a middle school teacher, assistant principal, principal and assistant superintendent, and currently our East Valley Institute of Technology district superintendent. Welcome, Dr. Chad Wilson. Good evening. Thank you. So um, I love the fact that she has a, a stool here because I typically don't get that and I'm really short, but with this stool here, I feel like a giant. This is wonderful. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Way to go. Um, my name is Chad Wilson. I'm the superintendent here at the East Valley Institute of Technology, and it's a pleasure to have you here tonight. Um, students, I want to take a minute and congratulate you. Uh, the fact that you're sitting here tonight is a clear indication that not only do you have the aptitude and skills, but you have the drive and the will to put yourself in this auditorium. We service um, thousands of students, and for you to be here is a clear indication of your hard work and your dedication, not only to your craft, but to yourself. You should be proud of yourself and proud of the fact that you're here tonight. Um, I know, though, full well that as an educator that, that your success is largely on you, um, but there's also other individuals who have poured their life into you so you could be here tonight. If you are a parent, a guardian, a grandparent, a loved one of a, one of the students, would you please stand up? And students, will you please give, give them a round of applause? Thank you very much. Um, I think being a quality parent, grandparent, loved one is the most difficult job in our country. And the fact that your loved ones are here tonight is a clear indication of the work that you're doing to make sure they're getting where they need to go. I also know as an educator that um, we have individuals within the organization that allow us to do the work that we do. I've been a superintendent in a number of different districts and have had a number of different boards. But ultimately, the, the direction of the district, the success of the district is driven by the leadership on the governing board. And we're lucky tonight to have two governing board members, Mr. Covington, our board president. Mr. Covington, please stand up. And Dr. Metcalf, a board member, please stand up. Your willingness to do what and make decisions that are in the best interest of our students is why we're here. So thank you very much for your leadership on our governing board. If you are a faculty, staff, administrator here at EBIT, will you please step up and step out so you can be seen? Come on, if you, if you work here, step on up and step out. Come on. Let's give them a round of applause. I have the good fortune in many cases of representing EBIT, but uh, truth be told, and my, two of my bosses are here, so I hope they plug their ears. Um, our success isn't because of me, it's because of the individuals that just stood up. Uh, our faculty and staff is dedicated to changing the lives of our students, and that is evident by the young men and women in our auditorium tonight. Last thing, students, over the next year, 18 months, whether you're a junior or senior, you're gonna have a lot of ceremonies. Um, honor society, graduation, a lot of different ceremonies. You're gonna hear it from a lot of speakers that will do infinitely better than I will do. Uh, but what I wanna say is a piece of advice that I hope, even though it might not settle with you tonight, that it stays with you as you, get, as you go through your journey. Um, you have the skills, the talent, the ability to go out and do well in our society, and that matters. And by doing well, that means you have the ability to continue on after high school, whether you go to college or you go to the workforce, and make good money. That's just the truth of it. And that good money allows you to get a nice house, nice cars, trips, doing well, that matters. But I encourage you to realize that when you become my age, uh, doing well isn't how you measure the quality of your life. The quality of your life is measured by the capacity your heart has to love. Have the ability to realize that life is more than just going out and making money and doing well, that matters. Life is about leaning in and supporting your neighbor, leaning in and supporting your family, having the courage to stand up for those who maybe need you to stand up for them. Because when it's all said and done, you will look back on your life and you'll have nice houses and you'll have nice cars with the work that you're gonna do because of the skills that you have, but you will remember more the good that you do, not the well that you do. So as you go through your journey students, please remember, you're gonna do well, but have the courage to do good. Have the courage to have a loving heart. Congratulations on being here tonight and on the rest of your journey. Thank you. I feel so tall. Thank you, Dr. Chad Wilson. And now we have a video message from Peyton Holland. He has invested many years with career and technical education programs and is currently the National Technical Honor Society's Executive Director. Your 
Congratulations, East Valley Institute of Technology, NTHS inductees. On behalf of all of us at the National Office and over 1 million alumni, we're excited to welcome you to the National Technical Honor Society. And today, we're here to celebrate you because each of you are an outstanding example of what happens when the desire to be the best that you can be converges with a passion for learning a skill. Your dedication to your craft and your commitment to learning skills, that's not only going to ensure your success in your educational pathway, but it's gonna serve as the foundation for a successful career. Now, before we go on, I just wanna take a moment to say thank you to all of the outstanding educators and advisors who have played and will continue to play a role in your journey. These individuals believe in you and what you can accomplish. And our members, well, they can't demonstrate excellence in career and technical education without educators who teach and model that for them. So thank you, advisors and educators. We appreciate you. Now, NTHS members, I also wanna take time to say thank you to you. Thank you for not only exemplifying the best that career and technical education can be, but thank you for believing in and investing in the value of the programs that you're taking. You know, if you've watched the news lately or read any headlines, you've most likely seen that our country, it's facing a severe labor shortage. Currently, nearly 10 million jobs are going unfilled, many of them due to applicants simply not having the skills needed to do the jobs. 10 million job openings? That represents a tremendous economic challenge for our country. It delays services, causes shortage of goods, and, and can even result in the closure of businesses. You all, you represent hope and opportunity, not just for our local economies, but for our global economy. The skill sets that you'll bring to the workforce upon graduation, they can immediately impact this global challenge and result in a more positive outcome for each of us. Now, not only that, but it also represents a tremendous economic opportunity for each of you. You see, the skills you hold, they have tremendous value. And if you continue to hone and develop them as you move throughout your career, that value is only going to increase. Now, when I was in high school, a masonry class changed my life forever. That instructor in that class, who's still a dear friend and mentor of mine to this day, he always taught us that if we had skill and if we took pride in our work, there would always be opportunities for us. We just had to be willing to seek those opportunities out and take advantage of them when they arose. Now that statement, it still holds true today and it holds true for each of you. And I wanted to let you know that NTHS, we're always going to be here to help support and encourage you as you go after those opportunities. I wanted to remind you that NTHS provides nearly $300,000 per year in scholarships to support our members who want to continue their education and skill development. All of our current members and new inductees, each of you are eligible to apply for those scholarships right now. Just visit nths.org and log into the student portal to get started. Now, once you log in, you'll see that you also have access to benefits like letters of recommendation, certification opportunities, partner discounts, and add-ons, and so much more that'll give you the opportunity to explore careers, develop your employability skills, and even more. And not only that, this year I'm excited to announce that we're launching a new NTHS alumni scholarship, a scholarship that will always be available for any NTHS alumni to apply for, no matter how long you've been out of school, whether it's been two years or 20 years. You see, we believe in supporting your long-term growth and development, and we know that growth and development doesn't stop when you graduate, it's lifelong. Always know, that NTHS exists to support and celebrate you. Students who believe in investing in themselves and acquiring the skills that you need to build your futures. So on behalf of the entire organization, I wanna say thank you. Thank you for your dedication to learning a skill and thank you for representing the absolute best that career and technical education has to offer. Congratulations and welcome to the National Technical Honor Society. So I have the pleasure to introduce our first guest speaker. You've already heard her tonight as she is the host for tonight, this evening's um, ceremony. Ellie Willard has, is actually a two-year EVIT student who graduated in 2020. She was enrolled in radio and audio production program as well as an NTHS um, inductee. Currently, she is a senior at ASU's Walter Cronkite School of Journalism and Mass Communication obtaining a degree in journalism, and she's launching into her professional career. 
holding school newspaper leadership jobs, as well as interning at a breaking news reporter at the Arizona Republic. So welcome, Ellie Willard. Hello, everyone. <laughs> um, so my name is Ellie. I'm now four years removed from my EBIT journey. I graduated in 2020. I'm finishing up my senior year at ASU with a degree in journalism, and I will have my first in-person graduation ceremony in May. So I'm really looking forward to it. As for my post-graduation plans, I am incredibly lucky to have found a great long-term internship, soon-to-be job opportunity. In February, I started working full-time as a communication specialist for the Tonto National Forest, which has been a culmination of everything I learned in school all the way back to EBIT um, and so much more. I've had such an incredible undergrad experience thus far, and I'm very thankful that I came from such a strong foundation. I had no idea what I really wanted to do with my life until I came to EBIT. Nervous and afraid, I took the leap and walked into the EBIT doors to learn so much more about myself and my passions than I ever would have thought. I'm very thankful that I had a very wonderful mentor, my instructor Dave Jude, who taught me all the basics of journalism and inspired me to continue on this path, which has thankfully worked out. And even to this day, Dave reaches out to me all the time to do the NTHS ceremony <laughs> or to judge uh, Skills USA competitions, and I'm so glad that I've had someone who still sees my skills and opportunities even four years past my EBIT experience. I think the mentorship that you get here is incredibly important. I loved everything about EBIT, and I really loved feeling as though I had a jump start on my career compared to my peers. I was so motivated and excited to come to school, and I hope that all of you feel that way. I'm not much older than you, and I sat exactly where you did a couple years ago, but now that I'm at the end of college and beginning a career, I hope to so offer some advice. Being here tonight means that you care. You've kept up your grades, you've stayed involved in school, you're motivated, and you're passionate. You didn't come to EBIT because you had to. I don't think anyone here feels that way. You all are an NTHS student because you care about your goals and your career. But even more so, you stay here and push yourself because you see how beneficial these programs are for your future. It's very easy to give up. We're all insecure in a lot of ways, and we struggle with our own problems and challenges. It could be a way easier option to just give up on the goals and detour the path whenever you hit an obstacle, but you've taken the active choice to push that mindset aside and assess yourself. You know your passions, you know your limits, you've taken advantage of such an incredible school, and you've chosen to take on life's challenges. The next couple years, things will get hard if you choose to go to college or as you enter adulthood, and it's essential that you find healthy ways to cope with it. Career opportunities and your end goals may shift, but everything will work itself out. Just keep pushing forward. Many times I thought I was unable to get through college, but ultimately I'm very thankful I pushed through and didn't let my insecurities get to me, and I chose to grow from all the times I failed. When I was where you were a couple years ago, the biggest struggle I faced was feeling that I wasn't good enough to be sitting in the seats you are or didn't work hard enough. As I've continued through college, I continue to fight against that mindset and catch myself expecting more and more for myself. Unfortunately, I think that's a challenge that a lot of overachieving and motivated students face as you're constantly reaching for the best. It's always good to look ahead and push yourself, but force yourself to slow down and live in the present. As you continue in school, make decisions for your future or your chosen profession, please stop and appreciate how far you've come and all the effort you've put in to get there. Remember the big moments and successes, write them down and rejoice about it. Let yourself celebrate and appreciate your growth. And don't feel ashamed if your path and goals change. Everyone is on a different path, so you should be working just for what is best for you. Do what you're passionate about, do what makes you happy, do what drives you to get out of bed in the morning, even if that means changing your major, your profession, or just picking up a new book. And reflect on your values and what matters most to you as you go into a career, and bring it into your work life as much as possible. You are more than your successes, and you're also more than your career. What's helped me a lot is categorizing what I want to do with my future by my moral ambition. So I love writing, I love communicating, I love doing good unto others, and I love sharing knowledge. As long as I find something that makes me happy and allows me to share all of those important values, then I've deemed that as successful. Always do what you deem is best for you, and your best will always be enough. As you walk on the stage tonight, I hope you can take some time to reflect on the passion that brought you here and appreciate how far you've come. Thank you. And now, I'm very pleased to introduce our second guest speaker of the night, um, Kaysay Toledo. Kaysay's journey from overcoming housing instability to completing the medical assisting program at EBIT in 2018 
Keisei becoming a National Technical Honor Society member as a junior in high school showcases his resilience. Graduating cum laude from ASU with a bachelor's degree in biomedical sciences and now pursuing a master's in genetic counseling, Keisei attributes his successes to the crucial support and mentorship received at EBIT and the opportunities provided to him through NTHS. This experience not only propelled him academically, but also instilled a passion for aiding others facing similar advers adversaries. Keisei's story is a powerful testament to the transformative impact of education and community support on overcoming life's barriers. Keisei. Thank you. I finally feel tall for this <laughs> because of the stool. Um, yeah, good evening. Uh, let's get another round of applause for all of our inductees. And I would like to say on behalf of everybody, we're extremely proud of you. You guys took the time and invested in yourselves and your hard work paid off. You're here tonight because you put so much time and effort and I really invested in yourselves. And I would like to say, I'm, I feel really old. I'm about six years removed from my EBIT experience. So I came here uh, in 2018, or I finished in 2018 with my medical assisting uh, diploma. And on the other side of it, now six years later, uh, I know you just heard my introduction, I'm finally in my master's and being, uh, coming from where I come from, that was a long shot. And I remember coming to EVIT because my mom told me that, hey, you may not go to higher education just because we, we, can't, we can't afford it. And She's like, I think you should start thinking about your future and you should go to EVIT and start thinking about having a trade to fall back on. And I remember at the time that I was really interested in going to, um, going into medicine. And I really wanted a, a, a career in healthcare. And I remember looking at the list and looking at the catalog, I'm pretty sure you guys have the same, same thing too, and I saw medical assisting and I saw that as my, as my, as my ticket. And I remember coming here and I was, I remember my first day here going to intro to medical assisting and meeting Mrs. Kaneen. And I really, I'm really grateful for all the EBIT staff because they've been really supportive uh, of me throughout my entire journey. And I remember Mrs. Kaneen pulled me aside one day and was like, I think, I don't think you belong in this class. I think you should be in the adult program. And it was an accelerated program and she took a risk on me. And I'm really thankful for that. I, I, I remember after that, I got put into Mrs. Taya's class, who was my medical assistant instructor. And it was a life-changing experience. I developed skills that I still use to this day. I have knowledge that is still useful even, and that's the thing that I really like about um, vocational education, is that it really gives you skills that you just can't take away, and you're still gonna use in your day-to-day. Your day -day, um, and I remember going through that, and I was about 16. So <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Uh, just some feedback, I'm sorry. Um, so I remember I come in at 16, I was very immature, and I would joke around a lot, and sometimes I would slack off, and I remember Mrs. Taya saw the potential in me, and she said, I know you're better than that. I know you can try harder, and she pushed me to she pushed me when I would slack off, and I remember, especially with my professionalism, that was the main thing that I was really struggling with when I came to EBIT. Um, but I'm really thankful for that because I was able to go to uh, get inducted to the National Technical Honor Society, I was able to go to HOSA, and I think after that, I, she really instilled a um, confidence in my abilities. And if it wasn't for that, I probably wouldn't have applied myself in my high school career either. Uh, so I could go to college. And so the way that college was, was possible for me was because I was a Barack Obama scholar. So it was a need-based scholarship, and it's because of all the work that I did, I remember I got looked at by the committee uh, for, the, for the scholarship, and it was because of EBIT, I was able to be at one step ahead. And especially keeping up with the requirements and going into uh, biomedical sciences, a lot of the terms and a lot of, a lot of what was presented to me was very familiar. And it gave me that edge above my classmates. And I, I just remember, like today. So today, 
I had clinic at Phoenix Children's Hospital, and I remember sitting there uh, in my car and really thought about how full circle it is. And whatever your passion is, no, whatever your dream is, I want you to hold on to that. And because one day that dream may come true. And it's because of this investment, investment in yourselves, and just all this hard work, it's going to pay off. And it already has. So this is just one milestone. But I want you guys to keep going. And I just want to say something to, to all the educators. I want to say thank you. Um, it's because of all your work and all of your hard work that, and your belief in these young men and women that I'm, I'm able to do what I want to do. I'm a, I feel confident in my, in my work and in my abilities uh, to achieve what I want to. And to all the parents and to all the loved ones and to all the people that have supported you, um, I want to say thank you too. It's because of your support that these young men and women are able to do what they do. But I also don't want to take away from all your hard work and all your efforts, because that is yours. This, this induction and your diploma, that is yours. Nobody can take that away from you. And I want you to be proud of all of your accomplishments, because this is just a reflection of your abilities. And with that, I want to leave, with, um, leave you with a quote from Maya Angelou. So I can be changed by what happens to me, but I refuse to be reduced by it. So whatever you're facing, whatever struggles you have, whether that's self-doubt, whether it's because you come from a disadvantaged background, don't let that hold you back. Just keep pursuing what you want to do. And I'm really proud of you, and I hope to see all the amazing work that you do. And um, once again, um, I'm really proud of you all. So thank you guys so much. You guys have a great evening. Thank you, Casey. Um, now, if Grazia Caramucci and Fatima Laura Duenas could come to the stage for the statement of purpose. At this time, it is proper to identify the eight lighted candles of the National Technical Honor Society. The light of knowledge and the seven attributes of membership are presented on stage and a candle is lit to represent each. In the center of the table is a lighted candle representing knowledge. Knowledge is familiarity, awareness, or understanding gained through experience or study. This candle represents the knowledge you've gained through experience and study in your technical program. The first member skill, the first member attribute is skill. Skill is the use of knowledge to develop great ability that is necessary to make a positive difference in a particular occupational field. I light this candle to represent skill. The second member attribute is honesty. Honesty is the quality of being truthful, trustworthy, and fair with everyone while at work or play. Light this candle to represent honesty. The third member attribute is service. Service is giving assistance and being ready and able to provide a helpful or useful act. Light this candle to represent service. The fourth member attribute is responsibility. Responsibility involves the ability to act without guidance or superior authority and being able to answer for your actions. Light this candle to represent responsibility. The fifth member attribute is scholarship. Scholarship is the distinctive mark of one who has mastered an area of learning, as reflected in the quality of his or her work, especially with respect to scope, thoroughness, and care. Light this candle to represent scholarship. The sixth member attribute is citizenship. Citizenship is being entitled with full civilian rights, civil rights, and exercising duties, rights, and privileges of this status. Light this candle to represent citizenship. The seventh member attribute is leadership. Leadership is the responsibility of serving as a guiding force and directing the way by going first with courage and confidence. Light this candle to represent leadership. Students, we hope you recognize these seven attributes in yourself and value these qualities which make you eligible for membership in the National Technical Honor Society.
Thank you, ladies. Students, I want you to take a moment and think about the support you have received from teachers, family, and friends. Those who have come with you tonight and proud of your accomplishments. They are here because they care about you and your success. Please take time right now to show your appreciation for them. Please give your family and friends a round of applause. We hope you have recognized these seven attributes in yourself and value these qualities which makes you eligible for membership in the National Technical Honor Society. In a few moments, we will be inducting you, each of you into NTHS. You have earned this by maintaining a 3.75 GPA, excellent attendance records, and becoming a valuable member of your community. It is because of the dedication and hard work in your career path that you are receiving this award. You should be proud of your accomplishments, and I challenge you to live up to the ideal conveyed in this NTHS slogan. Excellence in America's workforce begins with excellence in workforce education. At this time, we would like to ask Paula Corbin and Eric Middleton, Program Directors of EBIT, to please come forward for the presentation of the inductees. Parents, as students cross the stage, they will pause for a photo opportunity. Will the first row please come forward to be recognized? Kennedy Fisher. <laughs> Ashlyn Farnsworth. <laughs> Daphne Fabian Garcia. <laughs> Kirsten Ethington. <laughs> Cheyenne Ellsworth. Taylin Daniels. <laughs> Maya Chiricuzio. <laughs> Caitlin Bunner. <laughs> Gabriel Barreras. <laughs> Kiana Barreras. Deja Barkman. <laughs> Emily Bankhead. <laughs> Catalina Cartmel. <laughs> Ashley Lamb. Kayla Kersel. Andy Kern. Summer Jones. Kelly Yado. Casey Incardone. Rachel Horn. Alexander Hogue. Alyssa Hernandez. Caitlin Halverson. Savannah Gilbart. Carson Fuller. Elias Flores.
Kennedy Zumanski. Sophie Smith. Isabella Smith. Tanner Ross. Max Rosenbaum. Sydney Ramirez. Valeria Ortiz Oliveira. Kaden Okushka. Ethan Morales. Alexandra Merlos. Georgia Mays. Sophie Masood. Riley Lane. Nanaba Yazi. <laughs> Isabella Walpole. Sophia Wheeler. Danica Vianes. Amaris Vidal. As we wait for our students to get back to their seats, I would like to thank the Committee of Fellow Staff Members and NTHS Student Ambassadors who've worked throughout the year to help us arrive at the ceremony this evening. Can we please have a round of applause? The NTHS Student Ambassadors were students who were inducted last year and helped make this happen. We could not have done it without you. Can I please have Grazia Caramucci uh, back to the stage? Students, please stand and raise your right hand. And join me in the NTHS pledge. It'll be on all of the screens. As a member of the National Technical Honor Society, I pledge to maintain the highest standard of personal conduct. I will apply myself to continue a record of scholastic achievement, and I will strive for excellence in all aspects of my education. I will invest my talents, my skills, and my knowledge in a career of my own choosing, and I shall always endeavor to uphold my obligation as a citizen of my community and my country. You may now say it. <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations, students, on a job well done. You are officially a member of NTHS. Thank you all for joining us this evening. If you would like to take photos with family and friends, please exit the auditorium, and there will be photo opportunities in the lobby. Please allow for the students to exit the opportunity, or sorry, please allow for the students to exit the auditorium first, and thank you all for attending this memorable evening. Thank you.
Thank you.